welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions it is once again finally time for a spoiler filled vlog those videos bring me so much joy and i think it's been a long time since they did did one of those i think the last one might have actually been the attack on titan vlogs which were feature length films which is true and i will try and not make this series that long but i missed it so much just talking about a book in depth with spoilers and commenting on certain scenes and reading out quotes and gushing i missed it and now that it's winter even though i have no snow now that it's winter and it's cold i thought it was the perfect time to kick things into gear by reading one of my favorite series of all time which is winter night i will make a like a special video for each of the books and I will read them over the next couple of days before university starts. So I hope you're looking forward to it. Obviously watch this if you've read the books or if you have no intention of reading the books. I guess you wouldn't watch it, but if you want to see me gush, welcome, I guess. And if you don't care about spoilers, again, you are welcome while I reread this masterpiece. It's officially been almost two years since I read it last, which frankly I think is atrocious, <laughs> the fact that it's been that long. I don't know how I allowed this to happen, but it's been long enough that I'm ready to dive back in and the weather is just perfect for this. So without further ado, I've already taken up enough time full spoilers and this is the first of three vlogs coming out over the next week you are allowed to curse at me if it's if it's longer than an hour this is a random thought that i don't believe i noticed the first time i mean obviously i noticed but i forgot i knew that like baba yaga is vasya's grandmother or no great-grandmother, whichever, because the woman in the tower is her grandmother, mother to Marina. I'm in the beginning, I've read like 15 pages, but that would mean that Vasya has literal royal blood. I don't know why I never just, that never settled in to my brain, I guess. Like, I knew she had of both worlds. Like, she had the magic of the other world, and she had the her father's estates, technically, like he was a boyar. But her grandfather and her grandmother were literally of both worlds. He was, if not Tsar, he was the prince of Russia. And her grandmother came straight from <laughs> Baba Yaga, which was midnight. That's like very actually high up in the hierarchy. So Vasya is literally part royal and part midnight which I don't know <laughs> I don't know why that's not relevant and I appreciate it's not relevant because I am not really a fan of royalty plot lines but I don't know why I'm talking so slowly I guess because I'm getting into the hang of things so it's like snowy and peaceful right now but yeah so anyway Vasya literally could have been princess of Russia and <laughs> And of Midnight, so we stand. We stand. I forgot how much I loved Catherine Arden's writing. It's literally not even comparable with anything that I've read that's modern. I think this is the newest book that's on my favorites of all time list. And you can tell. You can definitely tell. So if this video has only started and you're, you're like five minutes in go read the book go read the book then you can come back and we can discuss it <laughs> want to know what i love about her so much one of the things at least one of the many is how much she pays attention to it i firmly believe she had the at least rough outline of all three of her books and what she wanted in each one because it's page 20 of book one and kashi the deathless is already mentioned and he is the major villain of book two I love I just love this so much if you're wondering why I'm kind of reading it slowly I think it's 
because I don't want to miss anything. This is my third time reading it and it's been almost two years since the last time. I just want to take everything in. I want to suck in the suck up no suck in take in the details and just read every paragraph with care so it might take me more than a day to read it this time last time for each book it took me like a day but I will get it done before I go back to university because this is just a delight literally a delight I am always happy when I read these books I am never ever ever sorry to be reading them there's a cool part in the end where it's like discussion questions or something. So I thought it might be interesting to just answer the discussion questions as I'm reading. I know it's like technically for book clubs and whatnot, but there there's some cool questions. So I think it would be fun to just like go through them as I am reading or maybe in the ending. We will see. I mean, you will see. I will definitely have to figure it out but there are some cool questions like the first one for instance throughout the novel Vasya means meets many strange creatures from Dunya's fairy tales from the Domovoy to the Rizalka to the Upiri which of the demons that Vasya encounters is your favorite which one would you never want to meet cool questions I wish I read this in a book club but actually cool questions <laughs> I would love to answer them in the ending maybe when I'm refreshed with knowledge but Obviously, I will do it and you will see, but still let me know if that will be something you'd be interested in. Catherine Arden is about the only woman ever to make me not hate mention of the church. Because I'm up to the part where Sasha is meeting Sergei. And he kneels to him and Sergei just says, We kneel to God alone here, said the monk. He studied Sasha's face for a moment. I'm making the altar bread for services tonight. And then they just talk for a little while and he tells him it is a hard life we lead here. The monk went on more seriously. You would build your own cell, plant your garden, bake your bread, aid your brothers as necessary. But there is peace here. Peace beyond anything. I see you have felt it. Just, just perfection. You can't be angry at this because I feel like that's the best part that resonates through every religion what he just said because that's exactly what it should be and it just brings me so much peace <laughs> to hear her talk about it that way I mean obviously rage will ensue when Constantine goes up north <laughs> but every time that Sergei shows up I am just like maybe you do deserve rights <laughs> I have so much to say about Vasya's dad because he is technically a kind man but also very much I'm not sure what the English word for that is <laughs> Zatutsan anyway that's what it means in my language but very much set in his ways so to say he has a new wife who is the age of his eldest son <laughs> and he is at least in his 30s like if he got married to his wife at, and she was 16 he was maybe a little bit older than her but worst case scenario he was a lot lot older than her too so he's like in his 40s now in any case it's alarming but yes I know that's how it was done but he has a wife who is what maybe 17 18 years old he took her to bed every night <laughs> For six weeks six weeks every night and then when she tells him she's pregnant he's gonna be like how the hell did that happen <laughs> in all of the years of his life after like five children did no one tell this man how children are made <laughs> did no one actually tell this man how children are made did he just think that his wife came to him and told him she was pregnant because she wanted to be like honestly after five children he takes a young girl to bed every week every day for six weeks and then is shocked when she is pregnant i swear someone give this man some education because it is embarrassing i understand you're probably traditional and 
maybe even a little bit stupid. I don't know, even though he's a lord, so he shouldn't really be uneducated. And this is like, <laughs> I mean, Siberia. But, sir, you would think that you would connect the dots after the five children. It is honestly astounding how he has the gall to be shocked. Read a lot more, but I forgot to comment because I was just too into it, I suppose. But Constantine is here and that immediately just triggers my fight or flight response. But now they stopped making offerings to the Gerti. And I just have to say how much I love Alyosha and Irina. I think they're my favorite siblings. Rather, I know they're my favorite siblings because they love Vasya so much and they treat her with so much love and respect, especially later when she knows what's going on and they believe her. I mean, Rina is obviously small. She probably just looks up to Vasya, but Alyosha is her best brother. Because they grew up together, they are very close in age so obviously they grew up together and when their siblings left and married and everything they were alone together but Alyosha loved her from the beginning and he is my favorite brother and now that I'm reading it again I realize how much I missed him later on. I know there was no rational <laughs> point in having him come down to Moscow I miss, but I missed him so much. <laughs> like, after the after Anna beats her and everything, Alyosha, though he did not tell her, began to mark her comings and goings so that she was never alone with their stepmother. He just takes care of her. He takes care of her, and he loves and respects her and always trusts her and believes her. I feel like the other two books are more of a part, and this is more of a singular story because even though everything's connected obviously this was very contained this was just within the village and the forest there's nothing wider than that obviously the other two books deal with a lot more stuff but this is very contained so you really get to know everyone very well and then you're really kind of sorry when she leaves them behind if that makes sense like her brother is older than her and he's the only one who loved her that much. I was just so sad when she actually left them behind because I would have loved it if he came with her and he was magical too, for example, or saw the Chierti or something because I miss him. I miss Alyosha. <laughs> Especially when I remember all the bullshit that Olga and Sasha will pull. <laughs> so that's the two songs that I have for now. I'm not sure how much more I will read. I've been reading really slowly this time around because I've been enjoying the vibes but also because I've been really tired. <laughs> it's supposed to be winter, not like 14 degrees. So I will check in later. Again, I have to comment about the fact that Alyosha is the best brother to her. Like I've read a lot more. I'm not commenting that much on this book because I'm just enjoying it so much. This is one of my favorite books ever. But, like, how Alyosha knows her really well. Every time that something happens to her, he knows. Like, Piotr tells him that she'll be married and he's immediately like, oh, she's not going to take well to that. Well, she will have to get used to it. I'd like to see that happening. And then when his husband comes, he's, like, just still joking with her and everything. And he's, like, he literally tells her... Blushing maidens are supposed to look covetously upon the lords that be for their hands, not upon the lord's fine horses. Like, he's making her laugh because he knows that she is uncomfortable. And my heart is just so full. I'm not even halfway through the book. I don't know why it feels so much longer this time, but in the good way. In a good way, I feel like it will take me longer to read this. It's just beautiful. I have nothing else to say. It's just beautiful, beautifully written. And read this in winter. You can read it whenever you want, but read this in winter. I have like either rain or snow playing on the laptop and I'm reading this and I feel, I feel wonderful. That is all that I have to say. So yes, we love, love, love Alyosha. And this time around, it's the third time reading it. For the first time, I'm actually seeing past the horribleness that is Constantine. And I'm 
paying more attention to his character if that makes sense and I'm appreciating him more because even though he sucks you can see who he is and why he is the way that he is and how much he is just struggling with himself and that's really interesting I think to examine in a way. This is only just turning into an Alyosha Petrovich stan account because he's been petitioning with their dad to let her go. He's just why father said Alyosha to Piotr not for the first time at the start of yet another ruckus supper. Three days in sh until she is married. We must honor our guests, said Piotr. Why is she getting married now, retorted his son. Can she not wait a year? Why, after a hard winter and a hard summer, must we waste food and drink on these? Because it must be, Piotr snapped. If you want to make yourself useful, co convince your mad sister not to geld her husband on their wedding night. He is a bull, that Kirill, said Alyosha shortly. He has got five children on peasant girls, and he thinks nothing of flirting with the farmer's wives, while he stays in your house, no less. If my sister sees fit to geld her husband, father, she would have reason, and I would not dissuade her. I remember loving him. But for some reason, I feel like I'm reading this for the first time through a different lens. Like, I was... I was 19 years old when I was reading this, and now I'm almost 21. And I don't know why, I just see this differently now. I feel like I'm seeing the characters, each of them, through a different filter. Like, I understand Constantine more, even though I still loathe him. Alyosha I love even more, and I resent her father for his small-mindedness even more. I understand he can't help it, but he's fighting the feeling that he gets every time he imagines Vasya as everyone else. Like, he knows who his wife was, what she wanted for her daughter, where she came from, and her words, and he's ignoring them. His wife that he adored, he is ignoring what she told him and is marrying her off to this brute, and even his son is petitioning for her and he's ignoring that I resent him a whole lot more this time and I know he will make up for that with his sacrifice but it's weird I'm reading this book for the third time but I feel like it's the first time and it's a wonderful feeling let me know if you've ever reread a book after a while and you just felt like you were actually reading it for the first time but even with the knowledge that you do have, some things just rub you the diff rub you a different way, if that makes any sense. But this is now an Alyosha Petrovich stan account. <laughs> and where this was intentional, obviously, I mean, <laughs> everything was intentional. But how great is it when Medved finally starts talking to Constantine and he's literally like saying to him, you have always been my loyal servant. <laughs> You've labored bravely on my behalf. I have watched you long. All of that is very much true. It's just not God that he's talking to. When you put it in perspective, it's kind of so funny. Because he's hearing that as God. I mean, Medit isn't exactly the devil. He's nature, essentially. All of the Chirti are nature. But here, he is the devil. So the fact that it's like equal if God or the devil spoke to him. Like you have, you have always been my loyal servant. I've always watched you. You have labored bravely on my behalf. It could apply to both. And Constantine in his just delusions after he just hit a girl because he wanted to kiss her. He just assumes it's God. Like, sir, you're self, what, what's the word? Like your self-awareness is at an all-time low. We are back in the Alexander Petrovich diaries, anyway. <laughs> because this is turning into that, I guess. When he's telling her, like, he's explaining that it's kind of insane how good she can ride. And then he's just like, we would be bringing our nephew back dead or broken if you hadn't rescued him. He said slowly, I know it and I am grateful for it. Father too, surely, thank you, Vasya whispered, and how he just gave her his coat and carted her away instantly. But, he added, in tones of light irony, I fear you are for a hut in the woods if you don't want to take the veil or marry a farmer. Your warrior's ways have quite put off our neighbor. Kirill was humiliated when you took his horse. 
Vasya laughed, but there was a hard note in it. I am glad, she said. I am saved from running away before my wedding. I'd have married a peasant before killing Artamonovich. But father is angry. <laughs> I mean, of course he is. <laughs> but he still thanks her that he sa that she saved Sergei. Again, need I say more? Alosha. I'm in another room. This is just going to be a quick update, but... Considering how much I actually love Alyosha and Irina, I'm just so upset right now that they never make a return. Like, he never, Alyosha never joins her in the South. She never sends for them. She doesn't even think about them that much anymore. She never wants to visit home. And, like, again, I get it, sort of, because she has to go into the world of midnight. She isn't really human anymore later. But it's such a shame because we spend two books with her stupid siblings and Maria. I mean, I love her, but... And we leave them behind. I think Irina could have had such a good time with her. And Alyosha would have supported her all the way. He's the one brother who always defends her, always protects her, and always believes her. When she says, oh, you don't believe me too, he's literally like, you're my sister and you're our mother's daughter. He always believes her, helps her. He drove this stake down a woman's throat just because he trusted her. And he protected her during the winter. He was with Dunya. He sang at her deathbed. I just feel like we could have benefited from having her most loyal siblings at her side in the end. And not just those that didn't believe her like at all. I've read a lot more. Obviously, now it's time for the showdown. She goes into the forest. She's with Morosko. Then it's the whole thing with the bear and her father dying. But I'm just mourning already the fact that this is like a separate story to the other two books. <laughs> I feel like it, this is just the prologue to the story of her leaving and meeting the prince and her siblings and everything else. But it's sad. It's really sad because I love her brother and sister who never appear again. So I guess that's one thing I don't like about this book because you grow to love them so much, you miss them later when they're gone. Another day, another time. I can't believe how long it's taking me to read this, but now they're trying to send her away to a convent and it's just so funny to me how she would literally rather just die in the forest and go to a convent because I can relate, but how she literally says, not if I have to live in the forest and beg work from Baba Yaga. You won't have to beg because she's your great-grandmother, <laughs> if we're being fair. But also, I love how they're just spelling doom for everyone else by trying to send her away. Because without Vasya, they're all dead. But they don't know that. But it's almost, it feels like they know they're dead without her, but they are scared of that and they really don't want to admit it. I mean, we know that Constantine would rather <laughs> conspire with the devil than admit she's protecting them and she has nothing to do with blasphemy or heresy or whatever he wants to call it just because he's attracted to her, which honestly I get. I definitely get. But I mean, if anything, <laughs> they're sent here to Morosco, so I'm grateful, but... I don't know. It's just the hypocrisy always gets me. It's a tale as old as time, but she's so good at describing it that you believe these are real people because they are and they were and it's very familiar. Back to standing Alyosha because he is the best brother I've possibly ever read in fiction, especially in this time where they were all just thick-headed and didn't want to admit when they were wrong and hated women how they're just talking and he's like he held her tightly i will guard you until father returns i will make him see sense you cannot protect me if every man in the village turns on us do you think i have not heard their whispers brother so you mean to go into the woods and die snapped alosha a noble sacrifice how will that help anyone i have helped all i can and i earned the people's hatred retorted vasya if this is the last decision i can ever make at least it is my decision let me go alosha i am not afraid but I am, you stupid girl. Do you think I want to lose you to this folly? I won't let you go. Surely he would leave finger marks on her shoulders where he held her. You as well, brother. Am I a child? Always someone else must decide for me. But this I will decide for myself. If father or Kolya went mad, I wouldn't let him decide things for himself either. Let me go, Alyosha. He shook his head. 
Her voice softened. Perhaps there's magic in the forest, enough for me to defy Anna Ivanovna. Did you think of that? Alyosha laughed shortly. You are too old for fairy tales. Am I? said Vasya. She smiled at him, though her lips trembled. Alyosha remembered suddenly all the times her eyes had moved, following things that he could not see. His arms fell away. They looked at each other. Vasya, promise me I will see you again. Give bread to the domovoi, said Vasya. Watch by the oven at night. Courage might save you. I have done what I can. Farewell, brother. I will try to come back. Vasya, but she had slipped out the kitchen door. I... How he just remembers the little details. I mean, it makes sense they would be closest. Because they grew up together. They were the closest in age. But it's just beautiful to me. It's just so adorable. For the life of me, I could not articulate to you why I love the bit where she's with Morozko in the forest. I guess the way it's described, because the winter aesthetic is beautiful to me. The frost, the fir trees, the ice, the snow, like the branches intertwining to make her canopy. It's all so wonderful to me. And because it's winter right now, I kind of like feel the cold in my bones as I'm reading this. I would so recommend reading this when it's cold. <laughs> or if you live somewhere where it's not cold, I don't know, crank up the AC when you read this. But and this is probably my favorite quote. I realize I'm not even reading out that much to you or commenting, but because this is a book that I feel more than I articulate, if that makes any sense. <laughs> like, I have nothing in particular to comment on, but I love everything that I read. But this is probably my favorite quote in book one. I don't know why it stands out to me so much, but sleep is cousin to death, Vasya. He murmured over her head, and both are mine. It just sounds so powerful to me. I have always wanted to have like a bunch of t-shirts or hoodies with bookish merch. And I will definitely make winter night merch for myself. If it doesn't exist, make it yourself, right? So <laughs> I'm contemplating now. I have ideas. But I'm almost done. I'm like on page 284. I have... Now that she leaves, it's the finale with the bear and the showdown with the dad and everything, which happens very quickly. I don't think I'll have much to say during this. And then in the end, we can go through the questions and answer them and see what's <laughs> what's up there. I don't think this video will be actually as long because I didn't have that much to ramble about in particular, aside from the fact that I'm just in awe of how long it took me to read this again. <laughs> but and also we stand Alyosha but that's because he doesn't come back so I feel like he needed some page time for himself I have no idea why but every time that Constantine speaks I hear <laughs> hellfire in my head I mean it's fitting the priest who thinks a woman is leading him to sin and it's not his fault that he wants her and like but that line like choose me or your pyre be mine or you will burn it's sort of just stuck in my head because I feel like it's very fitting. Like, this bitch literally made a deal with Medved. And he's like, I gave everything for you. I literally gave everything for you. <laughs> Good grief. I don't know. It's just so funny to me. And that is like his theme song. And now he's a lot younger and a lot prettier than, because Frollo was a creepy old bastard. But it just sounds the same. And like Esmeralda had the black hair, which bothered him a lot. And she was free. I mean, I don't even like that, <laughs> that movie that much. But that song is iconic for a reason. And it really, really shakes you to your core. Especially if you listen to it as a child. So... This is the first time, I think, that I'm actually hearing it in my head as I'm reading this. But obviously the parallel is kind of, kind of plain as day. So I don't need to explain it that much. But literally, as they were talking, it was just going through my head. It was always a bit weird to me. And I think I already said that in one of my videos. Like, and I'm not even joking. You might think it's obvious. But the first time that I read this, I thought Morozko would be something of a 
mentor figure to Vasya. I wasn't sure until like half of book two that they would actually be love interests <laughs> for each other. But that's because I don't think they're meant to be. It's written in a way that you can see she's, again, it's going to sound stupid, but flirting with magic. Not really a man. And that's the point. He's not a man, but neither is she. In the end, she is something much more. She is a witch. She is part of Midnight. She is Baba Yaga's kin. I feel like the more, sh the closer she is to Morosko, the less human that she is. And you can look at it that way. So it's not like literal. It's not like a, an immortal being flirting with a 15 year old girl. You don't look at it that way because that would be weird. And that's not the point. Like, when he kisses her in book one, I was like, because I didn't think they would be romantic, I was like, what is going on here? But it's all for, like, magic and strength and power. It's almost like he's bolstering her like that. And then the more human he gets, the less human she is. I feel like it's made that way. I mean, maybe she just intended it as a simple romance. I can't presume what she wanted to do. But this third time that I'm reading it, it feels less like a romance and more like symbolism for everything. Like nothing is literal that happens to Vasya. Like later when she accepts the bear, his personality doesn't necessarily change, but he is also on her side as soon as her mentality shifts. Like it's almost like they all just exist and depend on her mood and her development. And when she truly becomes one of them, None of them are no longer against her, and it's Vasya and the entirety of the magic world against the people or for the people, however she decides to play that. So I don't even look at it as a romance, like, oh my god, they are falling in love with each other. It's more so that she is becoming less of a human being and more of a <laughs> midnight witch. So that's just my two cents, you can disagree, but... This time it's especially strong, that feeling that it's not supposed to be considered a literal interpretation of just a YA romance. Love how Constantine doesn't even see her as a person with her own personality. Like, he hoped that after he did Medvid's bidding, she would just show up at his door and be like, yes, take me now. That's not how it works if you want. Like, if you want a girl, you can't really expect her to just show up at your door like he's... He's essentially an idiot. But that aside, it is so iconic to me how she was like, you know what? I need to scare the crap out of him. So he would leave. Morosko, would you please come with me and pretend to be like a skeleton or something? <laughs> it's such an iconic scene. Like, the whole battle was great when the Chieti come to her side and when Pyotr sacrifices himself. But it's even worse now because that means that essentially Alyosha will be left alone with Irina. Literally alone. And what saddens me even more is that he will probably have to find a wife <laughs> to take care of Irina and everything and never leave the village. I want him to go with her. Like, they can give Irina to Kolya and raise her, like, with his children. And Alyosha should have gone with her. I Maybe he wouldn't have a role to play, but he is her most loyal brother. <laughs> and I love him so much. Imagine how cool it would have been if, like, one of the other children discovered that they had the sight. Like, if Adosha also later discovered that he had the sight and he just went with Vasya. It doesn't have to be just Vasya. Because I feel like he's really underutilized like this. He's her best brother and a terrific character. Probably the best human male that exists in this story. And he just doesn't appear at all after this book and that just saddens me so much i think he should have gone with her i think she i know this is vasya's story but i feel like she could have expanded she could have had him go with her and maybe ha have an arc of his own instead of spending two books on olga's bitchiness and <laughs> and sasha's pious self trying to reconcile with the magic of his sister i just i want to i want more of alosha that's the conclusion of this video i mean I'm, I'm almost done now and then we can do the questions now they're parting and i'm just not handling this well he's like i will take care of you and everything that 
you will come back, won't won't you, Vasya? One day, I swear it. But she doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't. <laughs> At least not in the book. And then she just says, go, said Alyosha, before I tie you to the oven and make you stay. But his eyes, too, were wet. They, there came her brother's voice again. Go with God, little sister. Even when the kitchen door swung shut behind it, it was not enough to muffle the sound of Irida's weeping. I, I hate this. I hate it here. The interesting thing about this book is that it technically could have been a standalone. Like, that's what I said the first time that I read it, too. It technically could have been a standalone. It kind of wraps up very neatly. Like, there's sure stuff that's yet to happen. But this little particular present was wrapped in a neat little bow. So... It was a wonderful book. <laughs> like, obviously, a wonderful book. I will get started on the next one immediately. That will be the next vlog. But now we will do the questions. I don't have any more thoughts. <laughs> it's just amazing. If you've not read this before, do yourself a favor and read it, especially now while it's still winter. But I don't really have much else to say. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you for the questions. Otherwise, if you're not interested in that, have a great time. Hope you had fun with me and I will see you in the next video. Otherwise, questions. My hair is not its finest. I understand that. But for now, we will pretend that I am put together as we do these questions. These are like meant for book clubs. But I will see if there's any that I can answer. And if not, maybe they're interesting questions for you to answer. Or if you're reading this for a book club to include, I guess. Again, the first question that I already read out, I think, was which of the demons is your favorite? Which ones would you never want to meet? I love all of them. And I'm not even joking when I say that. I love all of the demons, all of the Chierti. I would want to meet genuinely all of them because I would absolutely be on their side and be kind to them and give them offerings. So I don't think any of them would want to eat me. But I mean, obviously, even though that's kind of logical i would personally not want to come across the bear that's all that i will say compare some of the fairy tales and creatures referenced here to your favorite western fairy tales again technically even though we were all raised on western fairy tales i am slavic so this is kind of closer to my own folk tales than western so i can't say that I was raised on Western because I was, pr I pretty much grew up on tales and stories f from Europe and from this part of Europe, so I don't know what to tell you here. What are some tropes or stock characters of the traditional Western fairy tale that you can spot in The Bear and the Nightingale? I mean, this is geared for Amer geared toward Americans, that much is obvious, but... Tropes. I mean, obviously, I guess, but that's not really Western. The trope that the woman is kind of rebellious, but that's not Western. I feel like that's universal if you want a strong female character. <sighs> Let's see next. Dunya is tasked to give the talisman to Vasya, yet she is conflicted. She fears for Vasya's safety. Was Dunya right to keep the talisman for Vasya for so long? Technically, she was, but I think if she knows the tales and definitely knows who Vasya's mother was, I think she was a little wrong to not give it to her because that's why everything escalated and that's why she died afraid. That's why some of the people in the town died. Like, because she didn't give her the jewel earlier, a lot of shit went happened. And, like, I get her wanting to keep Vasya safe, but especially because it's from Dunya that they know all these stories and legends, and she knows who Marina was, and possibly who Marina's mother was. I feel I should have given it to her earlier. <laughs> Next up. Do you trust the Winter King? What do you think? He is still hiding from Vasya. I can't answer that because, obviously, I know. But I don't think I can say whether I trust him or not because, again, I don't think of him as a man. He is essentially death. He is not someone to be trusted or mistrusted. He is a blank slate, I guess. <laughs> then what else do we have? What role do you think fate plays in the novel? How much of what happens is the result of choices versus inevitable destiny? I think it's a healthy balance, just like everything in life. Some things you choose to believe are fate and others you think were made by choices, but I think it's a mix of the two because it can be it can't be purely one or the other. 
Who do you think is to blame for the suffering Vasis village faces? Constantine, the villagers, Anna, Piotr. Was the fate inevitable? I think it was because I think a lot of those things are inevitable. Nothing can hold fast forever. But I don't think any particular person. Constantine helped it along, but the villagers were also at blame for accepting it so quickly and letting go of all of the old ways and gods that they used to just believe in. But then this stupid ass man comes and they immediately leave it all behind. I mean, it's always like that. The person that preaches is as guilty as those that follow him. So I guess equally. Anna for rejecting her second scythe. Not necessarily. She was raised as a princess. So she's pretty much stuck up. And not really suited for the simple village magic. <laughs> so I think she isn't really to blame. Piotr for allowing such misery. What what really could he have done? I mean, I guess sent the priest away. But yeah, he's not that deep. So I don't think he could have done anything. I think the blame is shared between the villagers and Constantine. But also not that because the bear was already loose at this point. So it's not really... It was more of a help for the bear to spread his influence. But I don't think any particular person is like solely to blame. To what degree is the character of Constantine sympathetic? <laughs> now, this is a complex question for me to answer because I would say he's not sympathetic at all. But this time around, he was. Does his passionate faith excuse his actions not even a little? Is he an unweeding dupe or a play willing player in his own fall? A willing player. He's not a dupe. <laughs> he's not a dupe. He is aware of the power that his words hold i think definitely he knows that when he sings people listen do his charisma and artistic talent conflict with this with or complement his vocation as a priest definitely definitely conflict because that means he can if he wants to play god he can say literally whatever he wants and everyone will listen Parallels between Vasya and her stepmother. Differences. Why does Anna hate Vasya so much? Because she's not afraid. Similarly, like Constantine. She sees someone who is like her, but she's not afraid of it. And Anna, unable to escape that fear, is hellishly scared of that. And I mean, parallels. They are similar in the fact that they can see the sight. I don't think they're similar. Aside. And they didn't want husbands. They just wanted peace and quiet in their own desired environment. So I guess they're similar in that way. Vasya is faced with the choice of marriage, a convent, or a life in which she's considered an outsider. What would you have done? This is, again, a shit situation because, I mean, there weren't that many choices. I would never want marriage unless it was someone there that I wanted to spend my life with. But in the cons, like, in the context of the story, not marriage, definitely not a convent, and considered an outsider by her village. I don't know. I would probably want to stay with my brother if the option of magic were not offered to me, I would probably want to stay with my brother and like become a spinster or something, care for the village children or something like that. But if the option of magic was offered, obviously, I would just go into the woods. Why do you think the villagers are threatened by Vasya? What does she represent to them? Again, again, that's like just like why Anya and Constantine hate her because she represents something that they can't bring themselves to be. Like, you see someone running free where you are content in your cage and you're kind of upset that you don't have the strength to leave that cage. So you actually just lash out at the person that's outside to begin with. I think that's kind of... The villagers are just villagers. Like, imagine you're leading just a simple life, going day to day, just doing your work, caring for your children. And then someone just comes along and tells you there's magic I would be upset if I couldn't see it too so I do understand that and then someone comes along and tells you that those that can see the magic that you can't see is actually a sinner and of course you cling to that because you want to see that magic and the fact that you can't and someone else can is enough to I think ignite the spark that is anger at the person that can see the magic not a clear cut story of good versus evil. 
how did these opposing forces overlap and where do you think Vasya fits in? Again, as because I know the entire story, Vasya is obviously going to be in the middle and that's the whole point, although she leans towards the side of magic. Over the course of the book, we see multiple instances of characters correlating someone's goodness with physical experience, uh, with physical uh, appearance. I can't talk anymore. <laughs> What are some instances in your life where you have seen others being mislabeled based on their appearance? Are there times when you have felt like you have been mislabeled? Everyone thinks of someone else based on their appearance. Certain things. Like if you see someone with drab clothes, of course you're going to think something. If you see someone with lavish clothes, you're going to think something. And it all, I think, depends on your subjective experience. How you see someone. Bracketed by sacrifice, Masi's mother and then the father. How is it an important theme? It's an important theme because we need to see what's actually worth sacrificing for. How many characters are called upon to give up, uh, up something important? I think everyone in their way because that's the point of the book. What are you prepared to give up for what you believe in and what you believe is right and that is kind of what I love about the book so I anyway this segment was kind of long but I still hope it was fun if you stuck around if not you can't hear this but anyway thank you for watching I hope this wasn't too long I made a vow at the beginning to just <laughs> allow you to scream at me if this is past one hour long but I don't think it is so without further ado I will see you in the next video. I'm not sure if it will be the next vlog or not, but I will see you in the next video.